if it's able to pitch inside runs again, he could run off into the placing. That's the way he's going to settle out the back. Job ahead of him. I'll be taking very short odds at all on bow, won't we? Shona from ATV here, doing this week's edition of ATV TV, and I've got Dean Yendall joining me. Welcome, Dean. Thanks, Shona. Thanks for joining us. No problem. So this week we're going to talk about this week's runners and uh, last week's results, and I'm going to give a brief interview of Dean so everyone at home can learn a little bit more about Dean. Um, so first of all, we'll go through the results. And on Friday last week, we had a winner at Geelong on the synthetic, Listo Gatano, over 2,200 metres. Uh, did a super job. Um, he was instructed to go forward and right at the front, however it didn't turn out that way and Brad ended up second last. But coming around the bend, um, I think he felt Weary's um, hands around his neck or pulling him by the ears. Anyway, Listo Gatano got up and he had a win and the owners that went down there really enjoyed it and it was a great result. Um, and he'll go around again early August, so keep a look out for that one. On Saturday at Rose Hill, Darren went up. To, Darren and Liz went up to the races, and I knew Darren would put a moz on this horse. Every time Darren goes to the races, the horses don't win. Abasso came sixth, so he did a super job for the prep. Um, he's gone out for a spell, and he's going to come back late spring, summer. So um, we're pretty excited about this boy because he's a real genuine trier, and um, he has a go every time he goes around. So Chris Waller's is really happy with him. Uh, Sunday we had Lucky Lion go around at Singapore, um, he come fifth, he put in a good race again and he was just a bit unlucky again, so uh, we'll look for him running around in the next couple of weeks, but Stephen Gray was really happy with how he went, he was just unlucky. Um, at Echuca we had Grand Arrow, he came eighth, um, he did a good job, he felt that he didn't handle the heavy conditions. Um, Darren Weir really likes his horse, so he's had two trips to Muldura and one to Echuca, so it's taken a little bit out of him in his first prep, so we've popped him away and he's going to have a spell and he'll come back a bigger and stronger horse and we're looking forward to seeing what happens with him. And we've still got 15% left in Grand Arrow's half-brother by Time Thief, so if you want to get involved, contact us and um, he's a really nice cheap horse to get involved in. We had Hippodrome go around, Michelle Payne rode this horse, um, led all the way, um, jumped out of the barriers and sped quite a, spent quite a bit of fuel getting there and come to the finishing post there was nothing left in the tank and we got beaten for fourth. So um, he'll have a little mini freshen up and he'll be running around in a couple of weeks time again. And on Tuesday we had supplements go around at Warwick Nabil, she finished sixth. She appreciated the cut out of the ground a bit, but she needs more distance, so we're just stepping her up gradually till we get to her optimum distance. And on Wednesday at Caulfield, we had Mum Biley finish 7th and Fantastic finish 11th in the same race. Um, by the time race 8 come around, the ground was fairly cut up and the surface was quite shifting and neither horse handled the track. So forgive both of those runs and um, look for more races in the next couple of weeks. So... Zoom through them and now we'll do the runners and then we'll get to you, Dean. Beautiful. Beauty. Okay, so this week, um, tomorrow, Saturday at Coleraine, we've got General and Moore going around. Uh, appreciate the cut out of the ground yeah. and looking for more distance as well. Um, Sunday at Sandown, Dean, you're riding imaging for us out of Barrier 10. How do you think he'll go? Yeah, look, um, he won quite well at Mildura. I actually led, on, led the race on one of Karen's and it did a good job to run me down late. Um, so I dare say if Barrier 10 is a tricky gate, but we'll see where he tell me to ride him sort of midfield and be strong late, as he does, and yep. hopefully he um, can step up to it. Yep, great. We've got Lucky on Barefoot going around as well. Um, Matthew Williams is really happy with this boy, how he's trained on. I think we've got Jai McNeil on board, so we'll claim a couple of kilos. Um, he's held his condition well throughout the prep, and we'll be expecting him to finish in the top three all going well. Monday we're off to Swan Hill where we've got first starter Linden Doom by Doomsday going around and you're riding this filly Dean? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how she goes. Um, obviously I don't know if I've ridden her yet track work yet. but um, Yeah, they use stable names at Wearies, don't they? Yeah, it's yeah. Makes it a bit tricky to find out who they are when you want to ride a race day, but that's how they work. Yeah. So that's that's the way they do their, their job. Yep. But, um, yeah, it'll be good to get on her and see how she goes. Yeah, and whatever she does from this first race she'll only improve. So. 
first starter in a race, it's always interesting to see what they do and they learn a lot and um, you can always expect an improvement on them next start. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Also going around at Swan Hill, we've got Edge of War with John Allen on board. Um, his last start at Bendigo, Brad Rewilla rode him and coming into the straight, he sunk down into the ground. It was a heavy 10, maybe a heavy 15, if Darren Dance was walking it. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry boss, couldn't help it. <laughs> Um, so we'd expect him maybe to do something um, on Monday, a bit firmer surface and hopefully he can run into some money and run into some form. Tuesday we're heading over to the UK at Goodwood where we've got Kalini going around, um, over 2800 metres. Um, he really needs to show us something this start um, to book his ticket to come over to Australia and contest some spring races. So yeah, I wouldn't mind getting a ticket booked to actually go over there and ride it one day. Well, maybe you should put that to the boss <laughs> yeah, and see if you can... There you go. Yeah. Darren, what do you reckon? <laughs> track rider, Aussie track rider, it seems reasonable. I don't know about track rider part. Oh yeah, well true. <laughs> track rider slash jockey. Yeah. yeah. And also, Wednesday, these are nominations at the moment on the synthetic. We could have Hippodrome going around and Happy Highway, so stay tuned for the website and acceptances for those will come out on Monday. So now we're going to learn a little bit more about Dean and where he comes from and where he likes being a jockey and how he got there and all those sorts of things. So Dean, what was your path to becoming a jockey? Well, as a young kid, um, my uncle Terry Donny, he used to ride quarter horses and Dad had a share in a couple of them and I was always going the races with Dad and it was good fun to watch the horses going around and Terry actually rode work at Flemington for Steve Richards at the time so I was able to go there and um, have a look around during the school holidays and I really enjoyed it and sort of took on from then. Oh yeah, and they had quarter horse races were they back yeah, then? Yeah, um, they were at Bacchus Marsh and then they moved into Calder Raceway. So. Oh yeah, and did they have betting on them? I don't know, jockeys oh. don't bet. Oh yeah. No doubt they were better. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. And what made you decide to become a jockey? Or um, similar reason. Yep. Obviously, I found the love of horses and loving the uh, atmosphere, the country air. Yeah. Just love riding. Um, it's a great job to be in. It's uh, you get to a lot of meet a lot of different people in the area, and you get to travel all over the world if if you you know capable of it. Yep. And uh, lucky enough, I've had a bit of experience. Um, I know it's only Singapore and and New Zealand for one meeting, but. Um, it was a good experience to yeah, do it. Yeah, exactly. No, very lucky. And you grew up, where did you grow up? So, uh, I was born in Melbourne. I uh, grew up in West Meadows. Okay. Uh, people used to prefer it called Broad Meadows, so they know yeah. more for me with the area. Yeah. But I um, went to school there, left school when I was 14, and headed off to Geraldry in New South Wales and started my apprenticeship with uh, Ken Sweeney. Oh, okay, cool. And what would you say is your career highlight? Um, I'd have to say, no doubt, Neewat winning the Lexus uh, Derby Day and then obviously riding him again in the Melbourne Cup mm -hmm. in that year. Um, it was a great thrill. Massive atmosphere, obviously massive crowd. You just can't explain how the adrenaline rushes yeah, for sure. when you're going out there. Yeah, in front of 100,000 people. Yeah. Mm. Um, so would he be your favourite horse? It's hard to say, I've ridden a lot of nice horses, like I even old horse Constant Force of Bill Wilds, mm -hmm. I've had good success on him, won a few yep. country cups, um, won probably a handful of races on him, and then there's uh, the likes of Chase the Rainbow that I won in this uh, race at Mini Valley, their group two race, oh, yeah. and he was a nice horse in the making, obviously things went wrong with mm -hmm. him, um, but I've obviously I've, I've ridden a lot and had a good experience with nice some nice horses, but I'd have to say like, yeah, near what? Yeah, probably. And you're leading the jockey premiership at the moment, is that right? Um, Country Victoria. Yeah, that's right. Country yep. Victoria. I'm uh, eight in front or something like that of Brad, but so hopefully I can maintain a fair break in between him. And yep. I suppose we've only got a week left, but. So you've just come back from your ten day suspension. Yeah, right? um, had ten days off due to a suspension riding one of Weary's at Flemington. Um, bit of interference in the straight, trying to get out. Had no luck, so. Uh, sort of forced the issue a little bit. Well, that's how it looked on the video. But anyway, I got to spend time with the little one, yep. um, Christine, of course, and no, it was good to be at home for That'd a few days. About time. What do you think is your biggest challenge that you face as a jockey? You're obviously small, and you said today well, you're a natural lightweight. Yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. naturally lightweighted. I'm tiny. Mum and Dad are small. Um, so my weight's never been an issue. Obviously, it's um, the 
biggest issues, maintaining the rides, putting yourself yeah. out there, doing your best you can, um, and just going to the races basically every day of the week. Yeah. Um, and just get the confidence up. Yeah. And you've punched around a few winners at um, South Australia, at Morfittville. Yeah, yeah. I went over there this season and actually yeah. had a bit of luck there. I think I rode only a dozen winners there, about 30 rides, and uh, snagged a couple of stakes races, got to ride Miracles of Life, which was yeah. a bit of a thrill. Been, yeah, exciting. Uh, she's a nice little man. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure where she's gone now, so, so they sold her, but you know, good luck to whoever's got her. Yeah, I think an American person, person bought her, but she's going to remain in Australia, race in Sydney, I think with Snowden maybe. Okay. If you could choose any other career, what do you think you would do? Yeah, I'd have to say I'd be try and be a professional golfer. Oh, amazing. Plenty of money involved in it, but uh, you've got to have the capabilities. Do you play golf out of when you're not working? Yeah, I try to. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's a bit restricted with the weather at the moment. Yeah. Um, raining, windy, hail, and... Yeah. Get to stay at home with the little one with Mia and Christine. So, and how old is Mia? Get, she's nearly six months, so mm -hmm. she's going well. She's got a bit of a cold at the moment. She's trying to get through that. Yeah, she's going good. What else do you do apart from golf when you're relaxing? <sighs> sit on the couch, yeah, sit on your ass, and watch TV. <laughs> couch potato. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful. Um, how do you find ATV to ride for? Pretty easy. Yeah. Um, great bunch of owners. Smart asses, yeah, like yourself, yeah, but uh, no, it's been good. Mum always said if you're good at something, stick to it, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> right. But uh, it's been good, I've had a good experience for Darren Dance and all the crew, yeah, had a fair share of wins for him. Um, and do you find our horses are well educated and how they you know load up and jump and most happy of them, with them? yeah, most yeah. of them pretty much uh, have no troubles with them, yeah, uh, bar one mere early days, but uh, it's one of a couple of group ones now. Ah, well, she'll remain nameless and you can work that out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, do you have anything else you'd like to add, Dean? No, I'd just uh, like to thank you for having me on it. Oh, no, well, uh, thanks for joining my us. Face out there. Yeah, good. Yeah. All right, well, that's this week's ATB TV, and we'll see you next week. Jeez. See you later, and good luck on the punt. No one wanted the fence last time, and they had been to go. And this horse hugged them for Jake Bayless and made up a stack of ground and stayed on really well. That was his first run back to the New York side.